Lady Oshun, are you mad at me for not interviewing you for like, it seems like a year? No, I've been on hiatus. I've been resting and I have had a lot of calls wondering when we're going to do something. So I'm really glad that this is the right time. This is a very opportune time. You were getting your house re redone. Yeah. How you like it? Love it. All right, cool. All right. It's, uh, it's good. You know, you, I'm jealous. <laughs> Don't be hating. So, so you know, you got a little work in the house. So that means that was that a manifestation of one of your goals. It was a manifestation of uh, my gratitude. I was thanking God in advance for all that uh, He was going to do in my house, and everything that I named, He did. Every time I turn around, He keeps on blessing me. In this so-called extended recession, some people say we're going into a lost decade of economic non-growth in America. In spite of the economy, in spite of the high unemployment <laughs> rate, you think God's going to bless people to get them a job and get their finances straight? Absolutely. Absolutely. How? I mean, a lot of folks go to church and uh, a lot of folks be praying and they still losing their job. Because uh, your job is not your source of your supply. Your job, it, it job can dry up. But your source is God. Your source is the universe. Your source is the God in you. Your consciousness of the abundance of the universe. Not your job. Not your spouse. Not your friends. Not the government. Not anyone else. You are the source of your own abundance. I hear people on the radio, on the, on the talk radio, they're mad. These are African Americans. They're mad at Barack Obama because he ain't doing nothing for the African American community. Should he do something? I mean, what what it, it, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, they, they want, they want people want somebody else to give them a job, give them a, a check, give them a, a, a social whatever, a social security money, whatever it is. They want somebody else to do something for them. Uh, hmm. I, I, there's some things I could say that, but but it would probably involve a lot of profanity. <laughs> so I'm not going to say what I want to say, but. Uh, Reverend Ike used to have a saying and he says, uh, work your mind and not your behind. A lot of people can create jobs for themselves if they would work their mind. If you would just use the uh, energy that you use to get over, to get around, to get by, or even just to complain. If you would use that energy to use it in a creative, uh, creative constructive way. I was talking earlier, uh, there's some people of a different persuasion who will come to your house and go to your yard and clean up dog poop. You're not going to find too many brothers out there or sisters who want to do that. But people of a other persuasion will create jobs for themselves. And, uh, you know, I'm from old school. I'm an OG. We sell dinners. The, you know, we, we do... Uh, we have worked in service. We go to other people's house and clean up. I talked to a young lady the other day who don't even want to clean up her own house, but she want to know why she ain't got no money. You're so, out of... There's jobs out there. There's something to do out there. It's something to do. It's something to do. And I don't think Obama or Jesus or anybody else can bless you if you're not willing to receive it. So if somebody's out of work, they're going to have to come to realization. They're going to have to do something that... They want to do this, and you may not be able to do this. You're going to have to. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to do something. So wait around, hoping that President Obama give you a job or give you an aid check. That's the wrong way to go. Absolutely. I'm talking about manifestation. You know, people. They. 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 they we, some people have magical thinking, including me. They think if we just meditate on something, the money just show up in a check in the mail. It would, it would if you were able to hold a consistent, positive thought. You may, you may meditate today and say, oh, I'm going to receive wonderful abundance. And then two minutes later, you bemoan in the fact, uh, I got all these bills. You're, swipping, you're switching your uh, attention from what you want to what you don't want. The universe gets confused. And if the emotion behind what you don't want is greater than the emotion behind what you do want, that's what you're going to get. Energy follows thought. And the nature of that energy corresponds directly to the nature of the thought. So if your thought is negative and lack, then that's what you're going to create more of. Negativity and lack. 
You believe that? I know that. You believe it? I know what I know, and I know that I know it. I say, so you're saying many people, including yours truly, have conflicting thoughts or conflicting vibrations. Absolutely. We want this, but we, in the back of our mind, maybe the front, we really believe we can't or we don't deserve it. Exactly. Uh, deservability and worthiness are something that we have got to learn how to develop. We have been bamboozled and brainwashed so long to think that we are second class citizens and that we don't deserve certain things in life and that God only blesses us if we are holy and pious. The universe gives to you exactly what you believe you deserve. So if you believe that you don't deserve anything, okay, you don't deserve it. But Lady Oshun, how long does it take to change? How long will long it take you to change your mind? That's right, your your consciousness. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're changing your consciousness, your mind, your, your old habits. That's not an overnight process, is it? It could be if, you know, these young kids. These young kids can do things much quicker than we can. They come out of the womb knowing how to work a computer. Six months, they sit on their mama's lap typing up stuff. They Their, their neurons are firing and firing and firing. We have become lax. We, have be, we, we accept what people tell us about ourselves. I know some people, and I'm not mentioning any names, who has the same goal every year, and they, I want to lose 25 pounds. Who you talking about? I'm not saying no name. Who you talking about? <laughs> I want to lose 25 pounds. If you keep on saying I want to lose 25 pounds, you're going to keep having to lose 25 pounds. If you instead would say, oh, I love my body the way it is. I'm so grateful that I've lost the 25 pounds that I wanted to lose. Change the way you think. Change the way that you speak. Change your perception. And as you change, things around you change. But if we're lazy, we don't want to do that. I know. You know why? Because when I think about losing this 25 pounds and keeping it off, that means I, I, the back of my mind says you can't have hamburgers no more. And all that bread and that sugar. Let me tell you something. I lost seven pounds and haven't been on the diet. I gained weight because I was unhappy. Weight is a protection against you. I was unhappy. I was going through a little something, something during the process of my renovation of my house. And I was inactive. I was not, I was not doing anything. And the minute that I got back in my own apartment and I started feeling freer and started moving, I didn't change my diet, I lost seven pounds. They just melted off me. I didn't even concentrate on it. They, you don't have to concentrate on what you want. You see your end result, leave it out there, and it will happen. But as long as you concentrate on, I got to do this, I got to do this, the universe says, oh, it's not done? Oh, okay. The universe goes by what you feel, not what you say. If you feel that you're fat, you'll be fat. I remember when I was a size 7 and I thought I was fat. I must have been anorexic or dyslexic or somebody ethnic. I had one of them initials behind my name. I weighed 115 pounds and thought I was fat. People need to come see you. You know, uh, your teaching center is way over east, right? Yes, it is. I say that because some people, we can't really change our consciousness and try to... Re uh, to eliminate the old habits, uh, the pain, the hate. we Some of us can't do it by ourselves. We have to come see somebody like yourself. You know, right now we're working very, very hard because, uh, you know, I have a teaching center. It's not a church. It's a teaching center. And we're working very hard because we know there's a new paradigm coming in. We're supposed to be going. Now, I'm not talking about this man who's 89 years old talking about May 21st was the end of the world. We're talking about the end of a system. We're talking about the end of things as we know it to be. And we're working hard to transform our consciousness in order to uh, be at one with what's going on with our planet. We have to recognize that everything is evolving. We cannot stay stuck. We've got to evolve along with it. Now, if we believe what the indigenous people have said, their calendar ends on December 21st, 2012. That does not mean it's the end of the world. It merely means that this is supposed to be the end of a system. The system as we know it of repression, oppression, lack of limitation, and, and all of that other stuff that we don't want. We need to change our consciousness to bring it in in an orderly fashion. Because we can do it catastrophically or we can do it peacefully. 
Last week I went to a forum downtown that the city of Chicago sponsored on the severe weather patterns. The lightning strikes, the thunderstorms, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the flash floods. They had the National Weather Bureau there. They had meteorologists from Chicago. And I'm a firm believer, a lot of people subscribe to a conspiracy that there's a weather machine that they're using it uh, as a weapon of uh, mass destruction. But I'm a firm believer that our thoughts can create the weather patterns. And people are upset, they're depressed, they're uh, about the economy. They're depressed about relationships. They have all of these negative feelings and emotions that they're releasing into the atmosphere. And of course, it, it, and, and, and into the uh, Mother Earth. And of course, it's going to react. So we've got to recognize that we have a responsibility, not only for our own personal gain, but a responsibility to uh, uh, the world globally to change our thinking so that we can experience that life and that life more abundantly that we've been promised. So should we wait for the 2012 to if change you wait, that you won't be here. What? You won't be here. If you don't change now, you won't be here. The last chapter of uh, Revelation said, if you're a liar, be a liar still. If you're a whoremonger, be a whoremonger still. Don't change. Don't change because there's a place for you. And it won't be here on this planet. You will not be here. There's no such thing as soul. I don't believe in soul annihilation, but I do believe that you, your soul will progress in a different planetary system. Now, that's, my, that's what I teach. Now, everybody may not subscribe to that. But if you don't change, if you notice people are leaving here in mass, they are going here like there's a party going on somewhere. So if we don't change our consciousness, we're going to be in that number. That's not going to be here. We're going to go somewhere where we can learn how to live peacefully with each other, how to be in harmony with nature, how to be in harmony with ourselves and with our creator. That's my opinion. So at the Temple of Divine Love Esoteric Teaching Center at 3074 East 79th Street, we're working on that change. And we would love to have any of our uh, brothers and sisters come in and fellowship with us and join in our classes. No matter who you are and where no you live, who you, are. who you are and where you live, be not afraid to come see you. That's right, because right, this galactic, this galactic alignment is coming, whether we like it or not. We don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I'd rather be prepared. I'd rather have and not need than need and not have.